was a big bump. Hey, good morning guys. I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to be continuing the series on tools, not toys. And while I am mostly a man portable operator for amateur radio and emergency communications, I'm looking to be able to transition from being man portable to the vehicle. Now, I typically carry a 50 watt uh, man pack, which you guys have seen on the channel. And then lately I have been trying to embrace digital with the CF20 Tough Book. Now, the challenge I had was how do I mount this in the vehicle? And that led me to all the research we're gonna talk about today and some of the testing we're going to do. So the uh, CF20 Tough Book, initially I had looked at options for mounting the entire laptop. And that included the 10.1 uh, inch tablet, or screen along with keyboard, but I found that the mounting hardware was too bulky. The cool thing about the CF20 is that you can run it with just the tablet. So for my vehicle operation, I needed to solve the problem of just mounting the tablet side. And it's a little bit heavier than most tablets. I haven't weighed it, but I think it's about two pounds and it'll run for about four to eight hours on the battery. And it can provide additional DC um, output from the Jeep to power this with a uh, 12 volt to 16 volt DC to DC converter. So that's the one thing that is primarily driving this video and all of the mounting we're going to do today in the Jeep. The second is my phone and I just want to be able to use the GPS application if needed offline and mount that as well. For um, field expedient communications, I have a man pack and I have been experimenting with this uh, relocation uh, head unit from ArmorLock. And I'm gonna see if we can use the same system to also mount the head unit. Now my goal is to make sure that when I go off trail, none of this stuff falls apart. And that is the test we're gonna do today. I wanna make sure that with uh, some minor rock crawling on maybe a medium trail that um, everything is affixed to the appropriate mounting surfaces. All right, so we're gonna do the hardware installation in reverse order, starting from the devices all the way to the mounting hardware. So for the CF20 Tough Book, uh, I looked at a few options and I started out with um, this mount and it's from a company called iBolt. I bought it because it was cheap on Amazon and I wanted to make sure that I could prove the experiment before I spent any more money. I'm not going with this, I do not recommend this unit, uh, but basically it has a size B-ball mount that is compatible with the RAM mount system. What I don't like about this unit is that it uses plastic hardware, I think they're called T-connectors, and I can see this coming off in motion, especially when I hit the trail. Uh, the other thing I don't like, it's got this weird arm that goes up and down. I probably did some audio clipping there. But uh, in general, um, it does actually fit this 10.1 inch tablet pretty well. And let's slide it in. All right, so we've got this locked down and then you just apply the clasp and uh, this will then be affixed to the uh, sockets we're gonna talk about in a second. So again, this is plastic, cheap. I'm not gonna use this. I'll put a link down below if you guys wanna experiment with it, but um, something I don't even wanna test because I know it's gonna fall apart and while the CF20 is rugged, I don't wanna start dropping it unnecessarily. So I did a bit more research and I came across a company called uh, TacForm and uh, I'll have to say that I bought all of these parts. Uh, this is not a sponsored video. Um, I did talk to the TacForm founder afterwards, more on that later. Uh, but basically the reason why I went with this unit is that it uses a amps compatible bracket that is actually mounted to the uh, tablet bracket using four screws. So it is actually not going to go anywhere. Um, it would have been nice if this was made out of metal instead of plastic. I did talk to the owner and they have some plans to make a metal version. Uh, I'll keep you update on that front. Now they also provide a couple of different uh, feet. Uh, I'm using the small and medium, and it's a perfect fit for the 10.1 inch tough book. And it's spring loaded. And the way this one is actually supposed to go on is you want the spring on the top because of physics. And we're just gonna place this on there and place it over the top like that. And it is a really nice fit. So. This is what we're gonna be testing today on the trail and we're gonna see if we actually have any droppage. 
All right, so the next piece I bought was, uh, they call it the X-Grip, and this is from Ram Mount, and it's got a kind of a cool design, and all you basically need to do is uh, drop your phone on there, and uh, what's cool about this hardware is that it's very quick to release and remove your phone. And then it also has a one inch or size B ball, Bravo ball, and that's industry standard. There are different sizes, but for my use case, I have standardized on the one inch size B ball for everything. Now, the other experiment I'm going to do is see if I can actually affix it to the uh, control head unit uh, for my FTM 6000. Now I do have some concerns that the feet don't go far enough because this was designed for a phone. Uh, if this doesn't work, what I may end up doing is removing the protective uh, frame or roll cage. This is the piece I'm testing and uh, see if I get a better grip that way. So we'll see how this works maybe on the, the, the ride back home. And the cool thing about the whole Ram mount system is that you can also mount any accessories so long as you're kind of being consistent with the ball you pick. So again, this is another size B ball, and this is designed to mount action cameras, specifically my GoPro. So I only have two mounts uh, for today, uh, but you can see how I can now actually mount the tablet, the phone, possibly the radio head unit, and also my action camera. All right, so the question you may be asking yourself is how do we now fix the size B ball to some hardware? Now I'm using the uh, RAM clamp system and it is a double socket arm. So a ball goes on one side and a ball goes on the other side and then you ratchet it down so that you can actually have a secure fit and the ball will give you some uh, ability to rotate it, the device based on the angle that you need. And I went with two different RAM mount options. I went with the uh, short and I'm also experimenting with the medium. So to make things easy, we won't use the tough book for right now. Let's use the uh, X grip. So really all we need to do is go ahead and stick one end in here. And as you can see, you kind of get full range of mobility. And then um, in terms of the hardware, we'll talk about this for a second. I'm gonna fix this to a system in the Jeep. Um, you can use uh, standard amp plates if you're not installing this in the Jeep and drill it into a wall, but I've got a separate bar system we'll talk about in a second. And then we'll affix the uh, bottom portion. And again, there's articulation on uh, both sides. And then you just ratchet this down. And now you basically have a way of mounting uh, this onto a one inch bar system. Um, so let's go ahead and turn this around actually. All right, cool. So uh, in the Jeep, I've standardized on a one inch bar uh, by a company called uh, Vector Off-Road. And uh, the clamps that are available from Ram Mount and uh, the clamp I have in my hand right now um, is actually from a company called Tacform. Same guys I got the tablet from. And you can actually see here, it's designed to fit um, over, I believe, a seven eighths inch up to one and one and a quarter or one and three quarters. They provide uh, spacers. So for my one inch bar system, um, I can go ahead and put the spacer in there and then uh, they have a couple of screws that sit on top so uh, anytime i want to add uh, another device essentially all i need to do is get another uh, system that clamps onto my bar with the size b ball and then get a uh, clamp with the dual sockets uh, so this will work consistently in the jeep right now i actually went with um, a RAM mount uh, version of this one, just so I can test a couple of different vendors. So I've already done the install in the Jeep, so let's talk about the actual system I went with. So I have a 2016 uh, JK Jeep Wrangler Sport, and uh, there's a company called um, Vector Off-Road, and they provide something called the JKE Dock. And it's an E-bar system that goes the full length across the dashboard, even around the cubby. So I have the ability to mount pretty much anywhere along my field of view, going all the way to the passenger side. And the cool thing about that bar in particular is that it doesn't require any permanent modifications to your vehicle. Uh, it's just three screws and two risers. Uh, in the center of the Jeep, uh, there's a little cubby. You pull out the rubber piece there, plastic piece. There's one screw, uh, I believe it is a 10, millim 10 millimeter socket that comes straight out and then there are two tabs on the other side of the jeep right uh, near the windshield uh, you pull those out 
you put in a couple of risers and uh, I think it's a seven millimeter um, hex nut that goes straight in. The whole installation took me 10 minutes. I'll put a link to the video that I looked at, but it's so dead simple. There's no reason to do an install video. Um, the only thing I will say is in the center where the bar wraps around the cubby, it's best if you attach the clamp system to it before you do the install uh, because there's not a whole lot of clearance. Um, the rest of the mounting bar system has enough clearance where you can put this up or underneath it and it works just fine. All right guys, so a lot of information today. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna install uh, this clamp system. Uh, we're gonna try the GoPro for the first time mounted facing me. And uh, we're gonna see if the tough book actually has any slippage and hit the trail. All right, see you guys out there. All right, morning guys, it's about 7.45, a little bit later. I have everything mounted on the Vector off-road mount. I've got the uh, GoPro ready to go. And uh, we have the CF20 tough book all mounted. And then uh, my older mount system, I've got the uh, Kenwood D710 on the Lido mount. Um, if I had another mount, I would try to put it up on the bar. So let's go ahead and uh, see how all of this works out. Alrighty folks, so uh, we're about a mile into the drive. I uh, had a lot of vibration on the dirt road leaving my house. Uh, for the last mile or so, I've been on paved road. Uh, while there is some vibration, um, it seems to be pretty stable. Uh, so I should be at the entrance of the Tonto uh, National Forest here uh, in about a mile. And uh, we're gonna be fully off road by that point. And uh, I'll probably jump back on when um, I actually start to uh, hit some pieces that are a little bit more significant. And of course, if anything falls off, we'll, uh, we'll stop and talk about it. All right, guys, slightly different shot. We're about to approach the uh, Tonto National Forest. Uh, GoPro uh, spins around pretty nicely with this mount system. So I like being able to have the ability to uh, shoot what's ahead of me and uh, also uh, myself, if you guys want to see my ugly mug. Um, so there is quite a bit of vibration, but like I said, everything's uh, holding pretty good. Uh, we're going about five miles an hour uh, through um, the 4x4 trail. And I hit about 25, 35 on the, uh, the street coming out here on the paved road. Um, at any rate, um, I'm kind of happy with what I'm seeing here. And uh, like I said, I'll check in in a bit with you guys. All right, guys, I'm going to try a different uh, camera angle. Hopefully you can see some of the bouncing here. Uh, so I'm going to be going about four to five miles per hour through here. Uh, the trail is still pretty moderate. Uh, you don't need four by four yet. But what I want you to see is um, the amount of bounce that is actually taking place with the CF20 Tough Book. And uh, just get a sense for what the experience is. I think um, in general, I'm probably not gonna be running uh, MCOM tools and the software on the uh, tablet while I'm driving. I think the plan is more to use this setup as a base of operation when uh, parked. Oh, that was a big bump. Yep, big one. Alrighty, folks, this is the uh, the last test we're gonna do. Uh, we've got a little bit of a climb here. I know it's hard to see on uh, camera, but we've got quite a bit of bounce going on, quite a bit of rocks. And uh, I gotta tell you, everything is uh, holding together. We're hitting a patch of uh, caliche out here right now. Uh, you do need four wheel drive right now, uh, so no two wheelers. But uh, like I said, I think everything is working pretty well here. So just do a bit more climbing and then we'll do a quick uh, after action report. All right guys, so uh, this was actually a great experiment. I covered a little over a mile and a half to two miles to get to the Tonto, uh, mostly on a mix of uh, paved road and dirt. Uh, there was some vibration. And then I made it to my point now uh, in the Tonto National Forest. I traversed about two more miles, uh, averaging about uh, between four and six miles per hour. Um, there was a lot of vibration on the trail uh, when I had to uh, roll over rocks. Uh, there was significant bounce here, but the tablet never came off its perch. So that was success, or so that was a success. And uh, the other cool thing is, I'm really surprised with the GoPro. Uh, having that uh, ball system for the ram mount actually allows me to pretty easily just um, take some pressure off of the uh, uh, the ratcheting mechanism and rotate the camera, um, you know, 360 degrees, so that you guys can get a shot, uh, for example, of of the cab here 
and then also get a shot of kind of the vista that I'm looking at right now. So I will say this system I've come up with using the eBar system um, is a perfect platform to uh, fix all of the uh, gear that I need. Um, I'm not going to test the, uh, the the radio mount unit. I think that's probably better served for another uh, video. Um, I could test the X grip with the phone, but uh, given the fact that the tablet is working and the GoPro is working, um, I think I would get the same exact results. So hopefully you guys like this video. I don't know how it's going to cut together. Uh, if you're new to the channel, I talk about practical preparedness, uh, emergency communications, and uh, I'm working on some software right now that should make it easier uh, to actually bring in uh, effective field expedient comms uh, into your, uh, I guess, into your preps and into your kit. All right, guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared. All right, guys, I'm going to try to get some uh, people on the air here. I'm on uh, 144.410. That's our uh, soda frequency. Just trying to see if I can make some quick contacts. This is KT1RUN. I'm not on a peak, but wondering if any stations will come back to me with a signal report. Again, the call here is Kilo Tango 1, Romeo Uniform, November. All right, last station, go ahead. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to hear you this time. Hey, I'm W7CK. My name is Norm, and you're about... Uh... I'm located at about 83rd and Deer Valley, 83rd Avenue and Deer Valley. All right, fantastic. Thanks for getting back to me, Norm. I think we made a contact uh, probably a couple months ago when I was man portable. Uh, I'm on the Jeep running the um, D710 by Kenwood, uh, running about 50 watts. And I'm actually working on some tools right now to calculate some line of sight calculations. So I'm trying to get some data points to see how close my math is. Back to you, Norm.